In the last lesson, we learned how to create MIDI clips uh, and program a basic drum beat using the drum rack, as well as affect the velocity, uh, change the placement of the notes around, activate and deactivate notes, uh, and basically create a beat that doesn't just seem like a very basic and repetitive loop. Now, we won't just use MIDI clips by themselves. We can use MIDI clips and audio clips together to create things that sound uh, a lot more unique uh, and just different than using just a loop or just a virtual instrument. So let's explore a couple ways that we can go about doing this. Uh, before I do, what I'd like to do is figure out which one of these drum clips that I wanna keep, and more than likely, I'll keep the one that I did the automation on. Let's just play this again. Okay. It's an interesting beat. I might want to change some things around, but for now, I think that's going to work. Now, if I plan on just using that one clip, I'm going to go ahead and delete these other MIDI clips that I have here for now. And I'm going to move this particular clip into the first horizontal row. And if you remember, the horizontal rows are called scenes. That's going to be pretty significant very soon. Now, before I do anything else, I'd like to add another clip to this particular row, to this scene. And I'd like to add an audio clip, something that's percussive, maybe a full on drum loop, something that will complement these MIDI drums that I programmed. Let me go down here to our clip properties. Right now I can see that I'm looking at the clip envelope. Uh, I would rather look at the notes inside of the clip. All right, so that's what's in there, my eight bar clip. Uh, let's go to our browser now. And inside of my browser, I'm going to find a loop from this particular little Loop Masters folder that I've got lingering in my hard drive. And I'm gonna find it some sort of percussive loop Let's see, how about, uh, that's synth and music loops. No, I think I want uh, percussion, here we go. Oftentimes you'll see the term top loops, and these are typically percussive sounds that are in a higher frequency range that would sit on top of the typical kick, snare, and hi-hat. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go with the conga here, and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag this again in the same row, the same horizontal row, uh, so that they're both in the same scene. Now, let me play my little 808 drums here, and let's get a sense for uh, how this conga sound complements the drums, or not, it might not, let's just see. All right, so let's launch the audio clip. That was very loud. Now what's nice about this is that if we focus just on track one, track one is what? It's a kick, snare, and a hi-hat. So a top loop is typically something that's gonna complement what's in our virtual drums, the kick, snare, and hi-hat. So this conga loop is nice because it fills in all that space between the kick and the snare. Now, if I remember correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I won't duplicate the clip, I'm just gonna expand the MIDI clip so we can look at it a bit better. Now, if memory serves me, uh, it was this clip where we move the snare and one of the kick drums back behind the beat. And now that I'm hearing that with the conga loop, I'm not necessarily sure if it works that well with this particular loop. Let's play it again. Yeah, I feel like the snare and that kick should probably be falling right on the beat. Uh, and again, I'm gonna quantize just the snares and just the kicks. So I highlighted every single snare in this clip by hitting the piano key on this piano roll that's associated with the snare. And holding shift and then clicking on the piano roll key associated with the kick, I've been able to select just the snares and the kicks. Now I wanna to go to my quantize settings to make sure that they're properly set before I quantize this stuff. So to get to the quantize settings, the shortcut is shift command U. And I look and there we go. The quantize amount was only 67%. I'm gonna go ahead and quantize this at 100% and we're gonna hear how this sounds with our percussion loop. OK, 
Okay, that's a much, much better fit. Now, I'm not sure if I'm really in love with the snare sound here in this kit. Uh, and there's a couple ways I could approach changing that. Now, I think maybe I just wanna use the clap instead. So again, I can highlight the entire row of snare hits by hitting that key on the piano roll. And I can simply use my up arrow to move it up to the next horizontal row, which is where the clap is at. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, I'm digging that. I think the velocity for the claps is a bit too high. So while they're all selected, I'm gonna hover over it, hold command, click and hold and drag down to reduce the velocity of the claps. Very nice, all right. Now, one other thing I'd like to do is, uh, I'm starting to think a little bit further ahead. And I have these two clips organized in a scene. And I'm thinking maybe I can set up these scenes so that each one is gonna be a slightly different part of the song. So let's explore how we can set up some semblance of an arrangement in the session view and start to feel like we're creating more of a song and not just a collection of loops.